Brahma said, When Lord Narayan continued to sleep, an excellent lotus of huge size came out of his navel as desired by Shiva. It was many yojanas wide and high. It had an endless stalk. The pericarp was of a brilliant hue. It was very beautiful with the brilliance of ten million suns. It was wonderful, excellent, and worthy of vision, containing tattvas. Exerting himself as before, Shiva the great lord, with Parvati as his better half, created me from his right limb. O sage, having deluded me with his illusion immediately, Shiva in the course of his sport produced me through the umbilical lotus of Vishnu. Thus it was that I came to be known as lotus-born and conceived in a golden womb. I had four faces, red complexion, and tripundra-marked forehead. Deluded by his illusion, and weakened in knowledge, O oh dear one, I did not know who the progenitor of my body was, other than the lotus. Who am I? Whence did I come? What is my duty? To whom was I born a son? By whom have I been created? My intellect became confused with these doubts. Then I thought, why shall I be under delusion? It is easy to gain that knowledge. The place of growth of this lotus is below. My progenitor will undoubtedly be there. Thinking thus, I descended from the lotus. O sage, for a hundred years the downward trend continued, but the source of the lotus was not attained by me. In my doubt-tormented state, I became eager to go up on the top of the lotus. O sage, I climbed up to the lotus by the stalk, but I could not reach the upper part of the lotus. I was disappointed. Another hundred years elapsed in my wandering up the lotus. I stopped a while in that confounded state. Then, O sage, by the will of Shiva, an auspicious voice saying, Tapa, Tapa, perform penance, was heard from the sky, which dispelled my illusion. On hearing the voice of the sky, I exerted myself for twelve years in performing a terrible penance in order to see my progenitor. At the same time, the four-armed Lord Vishnu of beautiful eyes suddenly appeared before me to bless me. The great Lord was holding the conch, the discus, the mace, and the lotus in his hands. He was wearing the yellow silken cloth and had cloud-blue complexion all over his body. He had a crown. He was bedecked in great ornaments. His lotus-like face beamed with pleasure. Such was the Lord resembling ten million cupids that I saw, still not out of delusion. At the sight of that beautiful form I was struck with wonder. On seeing the four-armed Narayan, shining like Kala, of golden hue, the imminent soul of all in that form of large arms depicting the Sat and Asat in himself, I became delighted. Deluded by the illusion of Shiva, the sportive lord, I could not recognize my progenitor in him. I addressed him with delight. Who are you? Please tell me. Saying this, I tried to wake the eternal being. When he did not wake up, I tried to wake him up with fiercer and firmer beatings of the hand. Then the lord who had self-control woke up from his bed and sat. He looked up with his pure eyes resembling a wet lotus, due to sleep. As I stood there quietly, the Lord Vishnu spread his brilliance over me. Standing up, he smiled once and spoke these sweet words. Vishnu said, Welcome, welcome to you, dear child, O Pitamaha of great brilliance. Do not be afraid. Undoubtedly, I shall confer on you all that you desire. O foremost among gods, 
On hearing these words uttered with a smile, I told Vishnu with an inimical attitude roused by the Rajoguna, O oh, faultless one, how is it that you speak of me trivially as dear child, I who am the cause of annihilation of everything, as a preceptor addresses his disciple? I am the creator of worlds, the direct activizer of Prakriti, unborn, the eternal, all-pervasive Brahma. I am born of Vishnu. I am the soul of the universe, the originator, creator, and the lotus-eyed. You must explain to me quickly why you speak like this. The Vedas speak of me invariably as self-born, unborn, all-pervasive, grandfather, self-governed, and the excellent supreme being. On hearing these words, Hari, the lord of Lakshmi, became angry and told me thus, I know you as the creator of the world. For the sake of creation and support, you are descended from my undecaying limbs. You have forgotten me, who am a lord of the universe, abiding in waters, the salubrious, the supreme soul, invoked by many, praised by many, all-pervasive, imperishable, ruler, the source and origin of the universe, the long-armed and omnipresent Lord. There is no doubt that you are born of the lotus from my umbilicus. Of course, it is not your fault. I have exercised my power of illusion over you. O four-faced one, listen to the truth. I am the Lord of all gods. I am the creator, sustainer, and destroyer. There is no powerful person equal to me. O Pitamaha, I am the supreme Brahman, the greatest truth. I am the greatest light. I am the great Atman. I am the omnipresent. O four-faced one, whatever is seen or heard today in the whole universe, whether mobile or immobile, is enveloped by me. It was I who created the 24 manifest tattvas. I have created the atoms. I have created the qualities of anger, fear, etc. Powerful and sportive, I have created their parts and limbs. I have created the intellect and the threefold ego therein. I have evolved the five subtle elements, the mind, the body, and the sense organs. I have created the elements, space, etc., and all created beings out of sheer sport. Realizing this, O Brahma, the Lord of subjects, seek refuge in me. I shall certainly protect you from all miseries. Brahma said, On hearing these words, I, proud of being Brahma, became angry. Being deluded by illusion, in a threatening attitude I asked him, Who are you? Why do you talk so much? Your words will bring up disaster. You are neither the Lord nor the Supreme Brahman. There must be a creator of yours. Deluded by the illusion created by Shiva, the great Lord, I fought a terrific battle with Vishnu. Inimical to each other due to Rajoguna, we fought a fierce battle in the middle of that vast expanse of the sea of dissolution. Meanwhile, a phallic image appeared before us to enlighten us and to settle our dispute. It had no beginning, middle, or end. It had neither decrease nor increase. It was as furious as hundreds of fires of death with thousands of leaping rows of flames. It was the unequaled, inexpressible, unmanifest universal being. The Lord Vishnu became unconscious by its thousand flames. When I too became senseless, Vishnu said to me, Oh, why do you contend with me now? A third person has now come. Let our quarrel cease. Whence has this arisen? Let us examine this fire being. I shall go down to find the root of this matchless column of fire. O Lord of subjects, with the speed of the wind, you will please go up to examine its top. Having said so, Vishnu assumed the form of a boar. 
O sage, I became a swan immediately. From that time onwards, people call me Hangsa Hangsa, a supreme being, Virat, an illustrious being. He who repeats Hangsa Hangsa shall become a swan, a symbol of purity and discrimination. Very white of complexion and endowed with wings on either side, I flew up and up with the speed of the mind and wind. Narayan, the soul of the universe, too, became white then. His body was ten yojanas wide and a hundred yojanas long, as huge as the mountain Meru. He had white, sharp teeth. His brilliance resembled the sun at the time of dissolution. His snout was long and his roar tremendous. His feet were short. His limbs were of diverse colors. His form as the boar was of matchless firmness, which assured his eagerness to be victorious, and he went down quickly. For a thousand years his downward course continued. From that time onwards, Vishnu came to be called Shvetavaraha, white boar, in all the worlds. A kalpa had elapsed, according to human calculation, when Vishnu thus went down and wandered in his eagerness to come out victorious. The boar did not find even the smallest trace of the root of the linga. O oh, destroyer of enemies, I too spent the same time in going up. From a desire to know its top as quickly as possible, I exerted myself and was exhausted. Unable to see the top, I came down after some time. Similarly, Lord Vishnu, the lotus-eyed, too became weary. Appearing like the lord of everything in his huge body, he too rose up. As soon as he came up, we bowed to Shiva again and again. He stood aside with a gloomy mind, as he too was deluded by the illusion of Shiva. We bowed down to the linga at his back, sides, and in front. Vishnu mused within himself, What can this be? That form can't be directly expressed. It is without action and name. Without any sex distinction, it has become a linga. It is beyond the path of meditation. Both of us, Hari and I, with the peace of our minds, became eager to perform obeisance. We do not know thy true form. What thou art, thou art, O great Lord. Obeisance be to thee, O Maheshana. Please hurry up to reveal thy form to us. Thus performing obeisance and prayer to quell our earlier pride, O foremost of sages, we spent a hundred autumns.